Biden's trap in Ukraine. Fear of escalation and promise of support collide. Foreign policy. Ukraine's problems go beyond a simple lack of resources. The recent fight over the US aid package demonstrates the strategic paradox that characterizes Joe Biden's Ukraine strategy. On the one hand, he promised that the commitment to Ukraine will not weaken and that US support will be provided as long as needed. At the same time, the Biden administration has consistently expressed concern about escalation and the prospect of direct confrontation with nuclear Russia, writes foreign policy. Both goals are laudable, but taken together, they are increasingly working towards different results. Eventually, Biden's balancing act will become impossible, the article says. It is noted that the Biden administration's strategy for Ukraine is based on the idea that Kiev, with the support of the collective power of the West, has time on its side. After Ukraine repelled the initial Russian invasion, this turned out to be true. With the situation seemingly turning into Ukraine's favor, Biden believed that Kyiv would not be harmed by precautions, including limiting the types of weapons Ukraine receives and the targets for strikes. Now, according to the authors, the assumption that time will be on Ukraine's side is looking increasingly dubious. Russia is rebuilding its military much faster than initial estimates and its armed forces are now larger than before the war. Despite the sanctions, the Russian economy showed modest growth in 2023 and is well positioned to do so again this year. On the other hand, Ukraine's strategic position is becoming increasingly dangerous. Lacking weapons and ammunition, the Ukrainian armed forces were forced to give up ground at the front while Russia achieved its most significant gains since July 2022 and is said to be preparing for a summer offensive. Even though American weapons are now arriving again in Ukraine, it will take time for them to reach the front. Meanwhile, Ukraine is bleeding. Perhaps even more pressing than the military situation are the political dynamics of the war. A year and a half ago, we wrote that the United States has more patience to support Ukraine than many commentators believed at the time. However, it cannot be denied that any future assistance Ukraine faces significant obstacles. Future aid to Ukraine may depend on who wins the US election. The authors write, they add the war in Ukraine may look particularly grim now, but the outcome of the conflict is far from certain. If Ukraine wants to regain its lost operational momentum, it will need more equipment and ammunition. Thanks to the latest aid packages, Ukraine has the resources to receive them. But more importantly, Ukraine and its Western backers will also need to change their overall approach. Ukraine can no longer afford to simply wait out the Russians. Instead, you will need to go on the offensive. For the Biden administration, however, taking such a risk would mean abandoning one of the pillars of its strategy of the last two years, choosing a single path and accepting the potentially escalatory consequences that may arise. This is a difficult choice, but not doing so could be even riskier, journalists emphasize. The Ministry of Defense of Russia reported that it shot down 108 Ukrainian drones, 51 of which were over Crimea, 44 over the Krasnodar territory, 6 in the Black Sea, the same number over the Belgorod region and one over the Kursk region. If Russian military data is correct, this is likely the largest number of drones fired into Russian-controlled regions in one night. As a result of the attack, problems with light began in Sevastopol, and the Twops oil refinery also caught fire. As a result of the attack in Crimea, the Sevastopol electrical substation was damaged, said Sevastopol Governor Mikhail Razvozev. According to him, while repairs are underway, the city will face power shortages and spot blackouts. Therefore, the authorities cancelled classes in schools and secondary specialized educational institutions, and also stopped the work of kindergartens. In addition, the NetBlocks monitoring service has recorded serious problems with the internet in the city. In the Krasnodar territory, the Twops oil refinery was attacked. The regional operational headquarters reported that a fire broke out at the plant, but it was contained. There were no casualties. The Astra Telegram channel, citing local residents, wrote that the port in Novorossiysk was cut off from power. A resident of Novorossiysk said that he heard more than 30 explosions during the night. In the Belgorod region, a drone attacked a car in the village of Oktyabrsky, said the regional governor, Vyacheslav Gladkov. As a result, a woman and a four-year-old child died. The last massive drone strike took place on April 27 and was aimed at the Krasnodar region. 
Then, according to the Russian Ministry of Defense, the region was attacked by 66 UAVs, and the work of the Slavyansk oil refinery was partially stopped. The latest shelling may indicate an intensification of Ukrainian air attacks on Russian regions and Crimea against the backdrop of Russia's offensive in the Kharkov region.